So there's a lot of topics on the table for Matthew Shinetti, who joins us from the CFL on TSN, who, if I'm not mistaken, has not stopped working through all of this. How you doing, Matt? Good day. I'm good, Rod. How are you, my friend? We're, we're good. We're pretty happy here. But the same can't be said for a lot of sports fans and athletes and coaches across the country, as you well know. What do you think about the state of affairs in uh, university football and CFL since the last time we chatted with you? Actually, we're speaking to a um, uh, someone from my alma mater, Ryerson University, a hockey player who uh, who was dealing with the fact that uh, the o- OUA was likely uh, going to have to battle with uh, this is before the announcement came out uh, whether there would be a whether there would be a hockey season and what that would look like and just the um, the added mental effect of of not um, participating. This is this is a hockey player who played in the WHL who had moved around. And, uh, several cities, uh, and he said it was going to be tough. And knowing that now we know that the high-performance athletes in Canadian university sports won't be um, participating in um, in a competitive season, uh, at least not until the beginning of 2021. Uh, that's tough uh, because there are so many universities. Every you know, pick a pick a part of the country that have uh, long-standing, rich legacies uh, with um, with Hockey, uh, football, uh, vo- volleyball, basketball—it's—it's—it's uh, it's, it's disappointing. Now, with the CFL side of it, I think you're starting to see on on as you mentioned, Rod, the the fact that players are missing game checks, and many of them are starting to wonder what is going on. Uh, and we heard a bit yesterday when uh, my colleague Rod Smith interviewed uh, Randy Ambrosi just a bit, uh, talking about a plan with the PA, and then the PA coming out and saying we don't know what they're talking about. Um, so yeah, this it, it, it seems like there's so many unknowns, and um, yeah, it's it's I, I, it's if it's frustrating for me as someone who and, and yourself as well, Rod, I can't imagine what it's like, man. Oh no, no, not at all. And that's why I'm trying our best not to criticize anybody because there's no handbook. It's new for everybody, and and our poll, by, by the way, Matt, today is who who do you support? Players, the CFL, or both? The runaway winner is both. People just want to see the guys on the field. They don't want to pick sides. They want to have a positive conclusion to this in football games in 2020. Now, the, the bi- our comments have just gone crazy here because people got questions for you, all our viewers. So my big one is the Friday night TSN football show you guys are debuting tonight. Can we start there? What do we need to know? 20 is our way of saying to the fans, listen, we know that this was supposed to be week one. We know that you were expecting to see the Bombers and, and, and the Thai Cats kick off the season. And we're not there. And we don't know when we're going to be back. But we wanted to give everyone their much-needed dose of David Sanchez, Milt Stiegel, Matt Dunnigan, um, Glenn Suter. Uh, and, you know, a bit of a tip of the cap, too, to um, Chris Cuthbert, um, our great colleague who, who, who's moved on um, and, you know, the legacy that he leaves behind on the CFL on TSN. Uh, but... As I mentioned, Rod Smith uh, will be talking uh, with Randy Ambrosi. I, I'm speaking to uh, Brian Ramsey, the executive director of the CFLPA, and we're taking a look at the season. This week um, is a focus on where we go from here, what uh, what what options there are uh, in front of us. Uh, but I can tell you that in the weeks ahead, we will be talking football because uh, we are still operating as if there's going to be a season, however it's going to look. Um, but this is just our way of, of trying to give all those CFL fans their fix because we're missing games and we're missing the regular season as much as anybody else. Well, Matt, I don't know if TSN consulted with a psychologist or not, but I can tell you as a mental health professional that I am, it makes people feel safe when there's normalcy in their life. So do you understand how important it is for you guys to be on the air tonight? Talk about whatever the hell you want. Play tiddlywinks. People just want to see you because it's going to make them feel better. Yeah, the one thing that, that, that you get to know about CFL fans, and I think I mentioned this to you last time I was on, is the community. Just the, the, just the depth of love and attachment that CFL fans across the country have. And I think it really, the closest thing that I, I, I think there's a comparison to would be American college football. Uh, but here it's, it's different. It's um, generational attachments to teams, obviously, speaking to you in the great province of Saskatchewan. Um, but they're are so many pockets of this country that love um, this sport 
so much and not just the sport but the community the fans people it's appointment viewing to to watch friday night football um thursday night football but also to be around each other at the stadiums in particular and that's going to be difficult because whatever happens this season if we're looking at an iteration of a hub city or multiple hub cities um it, that, that closeness won't be there. So I think with having a show like CFL 2020 and what we're trying to do, it's, it's offering fans that sense of community um, with the recognizable faces that they see. And, you know, we're, we're, I can't give everything away, but we're definitely going to be trying to do some creative things over, over the next few weeks because we want fans to know that we miss them as much as they miss us. And, you know, I, I miss, I can tell you personally, I miss the chirps that I get from uh, from Ty Cats fans uh, in the East End of Hamilton to the fans at TD Place to the fans uh, at BMO Field. So there is, um, you know, for me as well. I was just saying to people at TSN, it feels so odd. It's you know the middle of June, and um, yeah, we're we're, <laughs> we're 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 not even where we should be, and that's and that's tough. If it's tough I, for me, it's tough for everybody. I bet you get some good chirps from the players too. I could just imagine uh, during warmups and during the game. Does one come to mind? <laughs> uh, you, you know, you know, it's it's not so much the chirps. You know, players will chirp me obviously because of my lack lack of catching ability, and, and the one man who chirps me so much. And if anyone, anyone wants to see him in all his glory, um, <laughs> this week it, it would be Mike Riley because Mike Riley. I did a workout video with him and. And he's just nonstop chirping me about my workout form, about strength, about my physical abilities. But it's all it's all in good fun, and 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 that's the thing that I love probably most about the uh, the CFL is that I'm not someone who takes himself incredibly seriously to begin with, Rod. Um, and the CFL has kind of allowed me a platform to be myself and being myself the way I interact with players and fans. Um, it's it's such a pleasure. I mean, these six months of the year are are, are just meant to. You talk about you know. Uh, the ordinary and, and mental health uh, aspect, routine aspect of it, it's something I'm missing as well. Yeah, good for you. Uh, so just some fan questions before I let you go. Colin in Ottawa has a professional slash personal question. He says, ask Matt if he would have became a fan of the CFL if it weren't for his job, because I think he was a soccer guy before getting hired by the National Post. Did your job make you a CFL fan? How would you answer that? Question also says also Red Devils suck, but then but New York Jets rock. Oh, you saw very, <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> very, very, very interesting statement. Um, here 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 is a little known fact. Um, my dad had season tickets to the uh, Argos season uh, when Rocket Ishmael was there. I was uh, quite young at that time. Um, was would I have been a CFL fan? Um, I, truth be told, I I didn't embrace the league as much as I have now until. Uh, I was given the the option, not the option, but I was given the kind of the the, the order to go out and, and be a CFL reporter for the National Post. Um, I was a soccer guy. I, I grew up uh, a lifelong, huge, devoted Manchester United fan. Uh, but the CFL, um, especially in 2011, when I got to cover the Ticats in their last season in Ivor Wynn, um, that was it. I mean, I was a hook, line, and sinker. And my heart was sold to the league. And, and again, not just the league itself, but those fans, those fans in Hamilton, um, Argos fans that I, who I've been around for 10 years now, um, and Ottawa fans too. I mean, I, I, one of the great joys that I get during the season is being able to go up to TD Place because it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I count myself very lucky that the league has become such a big part of my life. Matthew John Lynch here. Uh, what is your own feeling about things? Do you think we're going to get, get all together? The, the commissioner is going to be able to put it together so we can have some kind of league uh, uh, this year? You know, I, I think what's going to be interesting is what happens in the next couple of days with the NHL. Because, and, and the reason I say that is, is if the Canadian government makes a decision about the 14-day quarantine that will allow NHL players to come up here, whether it's the hub city in Vancouver or Edmonton or Toronto, uh, I think that will have a tremendous impact on what happens with the CFL season. And I think it's, it's quite incredible that um, when you really think about the infrastructure of the CFL, what would have, what would have to be done, it's about getting those players uh, past the border. Uh, and if they can do that with such a significant amount of players living in the, living in the uh, United States, if they can do that, that is one check mark. The other check mark has, has to be salaries. And we're not just seeing this as not exclusive to the CFL, also an MLB issue that we're seeing with baseball. Um, uh, 
you know, we're talking about leagues who haven't played yet. And if, if you haven't played yet, you haven't gotten a game check. So unlike the NBA and, and the NHL, these guys haven't been paid. So after getting players over the border and their checks, then, the, the, then we're closer than, 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 we, uh, than we want to be. Um, but right now, uh, those two things have to get together. The only two ways, the only thing you can do to get those two, two things together is you got to get Randy Ambrosi and Brian Ramsey and Solomon Alamimian all talking on a regular basis because apparently, given what Brian Ramsey said yesterday, that's not happening. But you also have to see what the federal government, what it will allow for players to come over the border. Last one, uh, Matt, we'll let you go. I think Anwar Stewart is standing by from Kentucky, but Pat in Saskatoon wanted to know if you had a new set of chucks ready to debut tonight on Friday Night Football or Week 1. That, that's, that's always, that's, that, that is always a question that I'm asked. Uh, I've been asked if I have quarantine chucks. I've been asked uh, if I have a whole slew of chucks in, in boxes. Uh, I, will, I, I cannot give away anything. It may not be this week. It may not be the week after, but they will make an appearance at some point. I, I can I can guarantee you that. It, it is written in my contract that in this show, my Chucks have to make an appearance because they are as important as anything else that I bring. So they will make an appearance at some point. May, it may not be tonight. What a great brand. Matt, uh, hey, break a leg tonight. Say hey to all my uh, friends, the guys and gals at CFL on TSN, and uh, stay safe, my friend. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.